Should it be a film school graduate's priority to get into feature filmmaking or would they be better off pursuing, you know, shorter content on the web? I, you know, I get asked this question all the time, what's the best first job for me when I get out of film school? And I think the answer is whatever job you end up getting, because your second job will be a hundred times easier to get than your first job. When you're getting your first job, you don't have credits. And the students put together these resumes uh, that have all the student films they worked on listed on it, and nobody in the professional world cares about that, and they don't care what your GPA was or whether you received the uh, chancellor's award for X or anything. They wanna know what you can do and they can only find that out when you start working and start showing what you can do. Um, you know, I look, if you're determined to work in feature films, you will get there eventually. Uh, I think there are many advantages to not working in feature films depending on what your um, chosen job path is. Let's say you wanna be a cinematographer. Well, the, the traditional way to do this in the old, old days was you'd get a job at an equipment rental company and you'd be the person who would check out the gear to the companies who, who were renting it and then maybe you'd get a job as a second camera assistant and then a first camera assistant and so on. Perfectly good path and works there. But if you get out of film school and you really want to start shooting things yourself, then doing web series might be a better option for you because no one's going to hire you Forget shooting Lord of the Rings. No one's going to hire you to shoot an episode of Hawaii Five-0 or even a reality show there. But somebody might hire you to be the DP, the director of photography on a real, on a, excuse me, on a web series, and that might suit you better. And then you can find ways to work on slightly larger projects and build your reel and all of that. Uh, there's just lots of ways to get to the end point in the business. I also think it's important to not just get locked in on, no, I only, I only want to do this. I've had people say to me, um, I want to be a director, so I'm not going to take a job as an assistant director because then I'll get typecast as an assistant director. And my response is, as opposed to being typecast as a barista, I mean, you've got to pay the bills somehow. Wouldn't it be better to have a job in the industry, learning about the industry, watching the director, seeing how different directors work, how sets operate, than just saying, no, no, I will only step in when I am the visionary. I don't understand that attitude. Right. Well, how much of an eye-opener is that when you have actually talked to a student about that? I mean, are you able to change their minds? I would say three quarters of the time I can change their minds. Um, we had a student, uh, this is an interesting example from a couple years ago. Uh, she, her goal was to be uh, in the sports broadcasting part of the business. And she was about to graduate and she'd been offered a job at the NFL Network. And she was waffling about whether to take this job. I said, what on earth could be preventing you from saying this is the opportunity of a lifetime? She said, well, it's in LA and I don't really like LA. I'd rather be in San Diego. And they're, they're only paying $17 an hour and I just said to the student, you're out of your mind if you don't take this job. You want to work in San Diego? You're going to have a much better chance getting a job in San Diego when you've got the NFL Network on your credit list. You can go to the Chargers then and, and, and you have a bona fide resume there. And, and I actually went to her friends after she left the classroom and said, you've got to talk to her. You cannot let her turn this job down. And she took the job and then emailed me a couple months later and said, yeah, you were right. Oh, great. <laughs> so um, usually when you're being reasonable, you, you can succeed with the students. And sometimes they don't choose to do it and they just may not have what it takes um, personality wise to pursue this path. And that's fine too. Maybe they're meant to do something else in life. Well, that's interesting because what is your advice to graduating film students, not just creatively, but also in a commonsensical way or, or emotionally or, or I mean, because I think we all have these grand expectations about getting out there in the real world. And I think it's interesting when you said, tell that one 18 year old that can't go to college, how about getting a job? I mean, that'll definitely teach you all sorts of things about life, timing, schedules, people. Yeah, you know, I, I, I give the students uh, varying advice. Uh, one of the things I do um, at, through my job as a professor is I, I'm the advisor, faculty advisor for the TV club. And we bring in speakers who are very successful most of the time. But in the late spring, I, I do an event called Foot in the Door Night, where I bring in the alums who are one to five years into the business and say, tell them what you know now that you wish you would knew when you were in film school. Tell them 
how do they go about getting their first job? Because I can talk about how I got my first job a billion years ago, but it's better for the recent people to be there. So it, not just for this event, but in general, I try and get the graduating students to talk to the people who are a year or two ahead of them and hear firsthand, what's it like out there? What do I need to be doing? What should I be doing? Uh, I also always have found this true for my life and I think it's still true. Um, the way I put it is, if people are paying me for $5 worth of work, I try and give them $10 worth of work. And you know, I try to uh, see it as an opportunity. And sometimes I get students who are more about, well, they're abusing me and they're, they're asking me to do too much. And it's, you know, yeah, that's the time-honored tradition of people entering every business. With, you know, again, it doesn't matter whether it's the carpet business or the entertainment industry, you pay your dues. And um, if you really love the, the business, you should enjoy the paying the dues part. Yeah, there's some stuff that you know, nobody likes having to clean out the kitchen or the bathroom or whatever uh, low-level job you, you do. But I, again, it just like um, at another time you asked, how do you deal with the challenges of the writing room if you're a lower-level writer? I think if you're a PA, you should be saying, I landed a job in Hollywood and there are 8 million people who want this job and um, this is going to make a great story someday. <laughs> it's, you know, the, the day that they made you stand in for a dog, the, the day that you had to do the impossible thing. Um, there's a wonderful book uh, called The Mail Room. It's about all the people who had to start out in the mailroom at the uh, big talent agencies at William Morris and ICM and so on, and how they succeeded. And, you know, some of them had to do some pretty gnarly things, take people's urine or stool samples to the doctor for them, <laughs> things like that. I heard one story of a PA, uh, not at an agency, but on a sitcom, who the producers came to the PA and said, uh, we have a dog that was having problems uh, biting people, so we had to send the dog to obedience school and now we've gotten the dog back. Will you go to our house and let yourself into the yard and see if the dog attacks you? <laughs> the, this, the, as the story goes, the PA said no, and they fired him. Wow. Okay. And I have this on pretty good authority, it's true there. So sometimes you do have to say no, but most of the time when they're not asking you to be a chew toy for dogs, right. and, you know, if it's just, gee, I have to get lunch order and somebody's mad at me because I've got Swiss cheese instead of cheddar cheese, Okay, you can you can deal with that. You should. That's not the biggest problem in your life. Move on and look at the bigger picture, which is you're being given an opportunity to do something that you really want to do.